this is just not a time for religion. It's a time for the presence, the anointing. I'm just, I'm so passionate about freedom. That's what drove me to see God mm. because I had everything going on in my life. Talk but, about that for a minute. Uh, tormented, chain smoking. I'd have cigarettes in both hands going. I mean, addiction, just feeling uncomfortable, oppression. So it was that kind of just feeling locked in myself that drove me, that made me desperate to find God. Mm. Desperate. So there's, there's something about seeking him. Well, he says in his word, if you seek me, you will find me right. when you search for me right. with your whole heart. And yeah. I know folk in my family who tell me on the phone, uh, I've been trying to find God, but I, he ain't speaking to me. I'm sorry. Right. And a part of me always wants to say, are you searching for him with your whole heart? Right. Now, you clearly have done that. And he's come and spoken to you. And now you're totally dependent on him. Right. Talk to me a little bit about this dependency and how it's working. I feel really that he's just equipping me. I'm just crying out right now for revelation, for understanding. Because my heart is to help people. And I'm just blown away when I see the things that are happening in our society right now. Every child with ADD. When I was in school, ADD did not exist. There was no ADD, mm -hmm. but now every kid has ADD, and they're all being put on medication. And every, all the women have anxiety disorders and panic attacks. All these things that are, are just so prevalent in our society right now. And the scripture that just really stirs me is Hosea 4.6. My people are, are destroyed for lack of knowledge and understanding. And people just don't understand what is behind all this stuff. And it's, it's the enemy. Mm -hmm. People don't have any revelation that there are foul demonic spirits. Look, you don't have panic attacks. You have a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. You don't have depression. You have a spirit. Your child does not have ADD. Stop feeding them sugar and break that spirit off of them. So, and I have some teachings in that area about not about learning how to discern the voice of the enemy. Because so many of us as Christians, we don't realize what the enemy is, is feeding us. We think it's our own natural thinking, and we, and we buy into the, the world system. And it's like we have to get revelation. We have to understand. Because good people, people that love God and have been Christians for 10, 20 years, are bound and in pain and, and bedridden. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God came to do. That's he came right. to set the captives free. That's Where right. the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come on. Come on. So it's like, Preach. I just, <laughs> I personally am just passionate in going all the way in God, getting all the revelation, getting the full understanding so that I can just be a vessel, so that I can bring revelation to other people, mm -hmm. bring them into some understanding about the truth about God, the truth about the enemy, and then set them free. Set, set them free. And how about freedom from uh, from awkward belief systems? What do you mean? What's that? All right. <laughs> um, sometimes people in seeking the Lord get caught up in cults. Right. Sometimes That's people good. in seeking the Lord uh, go a little far in some strange directions. Okay, that's good. Um, I think God's movement today, and you share with me as you feel, is beyond denominations. I'm not condemning denominations. Thank I you. carry a denominational license in my pocket. But I believe God is moving beyond denominational to the presence of God the presence of Christ in our lives, the presence of Christ active in the world, right. and, and revealing himself to folks as you are discussing. Right. Yeah. That's a tough one. I would say the best way to talk about that is that Paul, the disciples, Jesus, they did things out of the ordinary, mm. but they were never out of order. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's like when it comes to religious spirit, a religious spirit wants everything so in order. And the Holy Spirit doesn't flow like that. So you have to learn how to break out of that and, and get into a place where there's a little bit of freedom, 
But discernment, that's why discernment is everything. Yes. Because you have to be able to discern Jesus is out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Radical healing is out of the ordinary. A hand imprint on an x-ray is out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. That's the way Jesus works. Yes. But not out of order. Yes. Not in a way that you just have to discern. You have to know the word. It's so important to know the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And to Amen. and to discern the true the true spirit of the Lord. Because again, the spirit of the Lord, and this comes back to my favorite scripture right mm -hmm. now, Second Corinthians three seventeen, where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of those cults, there's not liberty. There's a spirit of control and manipulation. Praise the Lord. So when you're being told this is the only way and this is the only church going to heaven, and it's when, control, not the spirit of liberty. So I think that's one good way to discern it. When, Rabia, when you teach about counterfeit comforters, what do you really talk about? Counterfeit because comforters... Because that's sort of what piggybacks on what we were just saying. Right. That, this is sort of a key message that I would say is my most universal message that has really just touched a lot of people's hearts because it's something we all deal with. And when I was first coming into the Lord, there was a season of time where God was just setting me free. And I, ha I was struggling with food. That was one of the main things, eating disorders. And, mm. and I had been a Christian for a couple years, and I was getting healing, and I was getting strong in a lot of areas. But that one area was just, it was getting worse, actually. Mm. And I was like, Lord, you know, what is up? What's going on here? Why can't I get free in this area? And right there, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said, you don't have a food issue. You have a feelings issue. It's not about food. It's about you don't know how to process your feelings. So when stuff comes up for you, rejection, whatever, you're running to counterfeits to get comfort. You're running to food. You're running to cigarettes. You're running to counterfeits instead of what the Bible calls the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he started to take me through this process of learning how to come to him when all that stuff was up and learning how to let him comfort me, learning how to come into his presence. And he would say, just give me a minute. Just come to me first. Let, just give me a shot. And then if you get up and you still feel funky, go eat some cookies. You know? Because God doesn't just set us free sometimes. Sometimes it's a process. Oh, absolutely. So I went through a healing process with counterfeit comforters to learn how to kind of my beginning stages of depending on God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm at a more advanced stage yeah. of depending on God. Mm -hmm. But this is how he was first teaching me. Praise the Lord. I, just, I think, I think in, in that moment, in that moment and many other moments, all the moments that you're here, you just ministered to a bunch of folks, especially so. when you said God spoke into your spirit and said, hey, come here for a minute. Yeah. Try me just for a moment. Yeah. And if you still feel funky, right. go have some cookies. Right. Right? God is real. That's what but I want But the people wonderful to know. thing is, if you spend a moment with God, He will do it. All your funky feelings are gone. He will <laughs> If you trust him, he will help you break your habits. This walk with God, it's real. It's not, a, it's not about religion. It's about a real, true God that knows you inside and out. And if you get into his presence, really quickly, I'll just say, one of the things that I was hesitant to become a Christian because I thought I'd have to become this cookie-cutter Christian. Mm. And I thought God's going to change my personality. I'm going to be really bland and really conservative. And, you know, I was like, I don't want to be really bland. I want to be dynamic. Yeah. So I remember reading something about uh, Michelangelo and when he would create, he would have a block of marble and he, before he started a statue, he would actually see the finished product inside the marble. Mm. And all he would do is chip away at the excess that was keeping it from being what it already is. Preach. Say it. Say it. Say it. Come on. And that's what God showed me. You know what? You don't have to fear. I'm not a legalistic God. I'm not, you know, my way or the highway. I'm not going to control you and try to take things from you. All I'm going to take from you is everything that is keeping you from being the masterpiece that you are, everything that's keeping you in bondage. So when you, when you know the true nature of God, then you can trust him. When you think God is going to punish me and condemn me and point a finger at me and tell me how bad I am, I don't want to trust that God. But when I know that I can really yield to him because he loves me and all he wants to do is get all this, ugh, this junk off me, so I can be free, and then in turn help set other people free. Mm -hmm. That's the whole deal. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, what a great ministry.